uh, and we'll we'll get started. So first things first, if this is your first call, welcome. We're glad that you're here. Uh, we are uh, happy that uh, that you've taken time out of your day to come and, and learn some more about how to make your web forms look better. Uh, the way that we do things is that I'm going to present here for about the first half an hour, 45 minutes, and then we turn the time over to you guys for Q and A. Uh, the way that we do the question and answer is through the question box on GoToMeeting. Uh, the reason for that is everyone is in listen only mode. Uh, you're in listen only mode because there's so many people on the call right now that if we didn't have you in listen only mode, there would be a bunch of background music and or uh, background conversations, hold music, and all that other stuff that gets in, uh, distracting. So. Um, we do the questions through the question box on GoToWebinar. Uh, um, I do answer the questions in the order that they are received. So type your questions in, and uh, I, will, I will start those at the, during the question and answer session. You can do that, or you can just hold your questions until the end, and I will answer them there. Because I do answer them in, in the order that they're received, there's no need to type them multiple times. Uh, a lot of times people will ask the same question over and over and over again. It's not, I, I promise I will get uh, to that, I will get. I will answer all the questions that are there, uh, even if that means I got to stick around for a little bit longer. Um, but uh, I will get to all the questions. Sometimes the questions are a little bit too specific. Typically, it's a maybe an issue or a bug that you're experiencing with the with Infusionsoft. If that's the case, I'm going to politely direct you to talk to the support team. Um, they're better equipped to answer that type of question. Uh, I am recording this call. And I will post it as soon as I can, as soon as it's available. Uh, there's a little bit of rendering and some uploading that, that needs to take place uh, for it to be processed and, and available to put online. So I'll do that as quickly as I can uh, as soon as the, uh, the webinar is over. Um, so let's go just a couple of, uh, of other quick little plugs here. Um, first thing is, if you haven't gone through Infusionsoft University, and you're just getting started or even just getting restarted with Infusionsoft or there's people in your office that uh, are just getting started uh, with Infusionsoft, Virtual Academy is a great place to send them. Uh, there are basically four to six courses per week. Um, and actually, I, I need to update this slide. The courses are, we've chopped those down um, to 45 minutes to an hour for each course. Um, they are, it's a free training for Infusionsoft users. If you go to help.infusionsoft.com forward slash academy, um, you can go there and sign up for that. Scott Richens does a great job with those. Um, I actually, I was uh, looking at some of the stats right before we, I got on the call today, and uh, there are actually more people registered for the virtual academy than the mastermind call, which is a, which is a great thing. So um, go and sign up for the virtual academy. It's uh, Scott, like I said, does a great job with that helping you get uh, and understand the basics of, of Infusionsoft. Next thing is, um, I don't know if there's any of my friends from the UK uh, on the call today, but you might be watching the recording later. Um, we have an Infusionsoft University coming up uh, on the 18th through the 21st of June. Um, and actually the starting price for this one is a little bit higher than that, uh, but it's either two, you can either come to the two days of the beginner or the two days of the advanced or all four days um, for the beginner and the advanced. We're going to be at the park in Heathrow. Um, that's kind of like our, our go-to place for, uh, um, for events when we go to the UK. It's just uh, on the, I think it's on the north side of, of the Heathrow airport. Um, and uh, we do have a few spots left. Um, we, uh, we opened up the registration. It's actually a little, I need to really update the slide, but it's actually, uh, we've opened up a few more spots. Uh, because there's been such a high demand for that. Uh, so there are, uh, I think we have about 35 people registered right now, um, and we have space for um, a couple couple more. So uh, if you go to infusionsoft.com forward slash UK university, um, you, uh, you can go and uh, uh, sign up for that and get the pricing details. I think the pricing for that one is, uh, I think it's like 100 or $200 more uh, as a starting base price. Uh, which is nice because then you, know, you don't have to fly all the way from the UK out to Phoenix. So um, uh, I highly recommend that you do that. Um, it's uh, I'll be there. Scott will be there. Uh, Francis will be there. Um, and we're going to be the ones running uh, running that event. So you're, you're getting the best of the best, if I do say so myself. So uh, Infusionsoft University. So it's infusionsoft.com forward slash UK University. 
Um, if you're wondering when the next one is here, that's uh, the next uh, event, uh, we actually have one in May that we just closed the registration for it. There's actually going to be 100 people at that event. Uh, we've actually sold it out, completely sold it out. So the last uh, four of these that we've done, we've completely sold out um, well in advance of the event. So uh, we will be opening registration for the next one here in Chandler uh, soon, so stay tuned for that. All right, so next thing is um, the way that we, we've changed the format of the mastermind calls just a little bit um, to where you guys get to control what we talk about on these calls. Um, so you can go to mastermindwebinars.uservoice.com and actually let me go and, and pull that up um, real quick here uh, so you can see um, how this works. Uh, basically what you can do is um, you you tell us what you want what you want us to talk about uh, on the calls and whichever one has the most votes uh, at uh, the on Monday uh, at the end of the day on Monday that becomes the one that uh, that we will do uh, the next week so um, this you can see ninja tricks for better looking web forms that's that's one that uh, I think uh, chase I don't know if chase is on the call but uh, Chase uh, is the one that suggested that, and it got 48 votes. So as you come here, uh, you can go and vote. And you can either you can you have a total of 10 votes, and you can put three up to three votes per idea. And the one with the most votes, like I said, is the one that uh, that we we go with for that week. So um, go here, go vote, and as soon as we do this one. So for example, I'm going to go and update this one real quick. Um, any of you that voted for that uh, for that um, that topic, um, you can now go and reuse those votes. Let me go and do this real quick so you can kind of see how, what I do on the back end here. Um, and we're going to update the status to completed. I won't, I won't spam you and send you a bunch of emails, but um, that's the one that we're doing today. So um, go, go vote, go submit your ideas, and uh, get um, uh, and uh, and get some uh, some great ideas for everyone. Um, to, to go and vote for. All right, uh, let's see, I think there's one more. No, uh, oh yeah, that's the other thing is follow me on Twitter. Uh, that's the best way to know as soon as the mastermind recording is posted. Uh, I send out a tweet, I think Scott sends out a tweet or he either retweets me, I think. Um, so we send that out. Um, also, every once in a while I do ninja tricks and I, I post and ask people if they wanna be my guinea pigs uh, for some of the little tricks that I'm working on. And then also, if you want to get feedback or get your questions answered. Uh, so, uh, again, follow me on Twitter. It's at Jordan Hatch. Um, a couple of people are asking for the link to User Voice. Um, it's mastermindwebinars.uservoice.com. That's the, the place you get. So, Mastermind Webinars. There's no www in front, just mastermindwebinars.uservoice.com. All right. So, let's get into uh, to the content today. Um, like I mentioned before, we're going to be talking about, <clears throat> excuse me, web form ninja tricks. Really, specifically, um, the things that you can do uh, to style your web form to make them look good. So um, I'm going to cover at minimum two things and a third thing if we have time. Um, the uh, the the first thing that we're going to talk about is the things that you can do out of the box. Um, Infusionsoft uh, about a year and a half ago released the drag and drop uh, web form builder. Um, and it made building a web form a lot easier and, and building, not just, just building a web form, but building a web form that looks good. And so, um, I'm going to show you some of the things that you can do. And, um, I'm going to be showing you using the, uh, the new editor that's in the drag and drop builder. So if my interface looks a little bit different, it's because we're in the middle of the release and, uh, we are. Uh, still in the process of getting that out to all customers, I, I believe. Um, I haven't checked lately. I should probably do that. But um, I'm going to show you based on what my editor looks like. If, uh, if, yours, if your editor doesn't look the same as mine, don't worry. It will soon, uh, within the next week or so. So we're going to talk about what you can do out of the box and how to do it. Um, we're also going to talk about um, some CSS ninja tricks. So we're going to get into um, a little bit of CSS and how that works. And then if we have time... Um, which I don't think that we do, but I'll, I'll try and get into some JavaScript tricks uh, as well. And maybe I'll just cover some high-level stuff uh, for you uh, programmers out there, some things that you can do with the web forms. 
So um, let's uh, let's go ahead and, and get into the builder real quick. Um, I want you to uh, on GoToWebinar. There's a way that you can raise your hand. I want to make sure that number one, you can hear my voice and see my screen. If you can do both of those, please raise your hand, and that'll let me know. Uh, if you look on the right hand side and go to webinar, that will let me know. All right, a bunch of people are raising their hands, so I'm gonna I'm just gonna go with that. I'll go ahead and lower those for you. Um, all right, so uh, what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna first close out a bunch of my open programs uh, so that my computer runs a little bit faster here and. Quit, quit. All right, so um, the way that we're gonna go, we're gonna go play with uh, some web forms here uh, and we're gonna do this in the campaign builder. So I'm gonna go view some campaigns actually and I'm just gonna create a new one um, and we're gonna call this our web form demo. Now you can do the, everything that we're doing here also applies if you were to go into your legacy web forms and use the drag and drop, uh, uh, the drag and drop uh, uh, editor as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag out a goal, and we're going to the first thing we're going to do um, is call this our uh, uh, web form one, and this goal here is satisfied by a web form being submitted. So when I want to configure it, all I have to do is double click on it. It takes me right into the editor. All right, so uh, this is the new editor. Uh, this is the the uh, tiny the new version of Tiny MCE. It has a lot of flexibility, a lot more stability as well. Um, this is also the editor that will be in the uh, uh, email builder as well for you. So um, what I'm going to do here is just kind of show you some of the things that you can do just completely out of the box without knowing any code or, um, you know, any, any real tricks uh, to, to do. It's just very simple things that immediately will make your web forms look better. So the first thing that I always do uh, when, I, when I build these is I change the submit button. So the way that you do that, you just simply click on it and this is a, this has less to do with making it look good and make, uh, and more to do with how to make it um, convert better. Um, always, always, always change the label on the submit button. Don't leave it as submit. What you want to change it to is something that, it, that they are uh, or that's congruent with the offer that you're sending or that you're giving them. So for example, if I had um, let's for example, a title here that said fill out the form, below to get my free video All right or actually let's just let's say my free ebook okay um, what I would do here is I would change the submit button to something like send me the ebook and save that now what happens is is as they're going through when they're pressing that button, there's some subconscious stuff that happens that they're they're agreeing and accepting and making a, a conscious decision that says yes I want that ebook to be sent to me and it actually improves your conversion rate and um, you know it sounds like it's all that that psychological mumbo jumbo BS type stuff but it, it really does actually work I promise it does so just just trust me on that so change it to something that's congruent with the offer that you're you're giving. Now, uh, one of the things that I also always do is I always center these, these buttons. Um, it makes it look a lot better. Um, so it's going to move this button to the middle here. There's also some advanced styling and some custom sizes that we can do as well. So um, when we turn this on, you'll notice that it changes a little bit. Uh, the, it goes from a less of a button and more to kind of a almost like an image without it being actually an image. So some things that we can do here is we can change the background color. So if we wanted it to be a, you know, a bright green color, uh, we could do that. So if you know the, you know, color codes on your website, uh, you can do that. There's lots of different studies out there that you can go read online that say, you know, certain colors convert better. Um, you know, green is a good one. Um, you want to stay away from reds. Oranges work good. 
Um, so it just kind of depends. You want it, to, you want your offer to really stand out, uh, but you don't want it to not look good either. So you can pick your background color here. So I'm, I'm going to go with kind of a more of a like an infusion soft green color here. And uh, the other thing I can do is I can change my font. Now these are the these are what are called the web safe fonts. Uh, web safe fonts are fonts that regardless of the the platform uh, that you're on, whether you're Windows, PC, Linux, or whatever else, um, these are the fonts that everyone has installed. That's why they're called web safe fonts. So you can choose from these web safe fonts here. Um, the default is Helvetica, but if you wanted to choose Verdana or if you wanted to do Arial, you can do that as well. You can also change the font color. Um, one thing that you want to do is make sure that your colors are contrasting. So if you have a dark color here for your button in, uh, background, you want to make sure that you have a light color for your font. Um, so if you save this, you can see it, it stands out. The offer stands out quite a bit more there. Um, one, one thing that I use uh, actually a lot is this website. It's called cooler.adobe.com. Um, this is a really cool tool to help you come up with your color palette. So there's a couple things that you can do. Uh, number one, they have like a directory here of, of color palettes that people are using or have created. So this is a, this is a pretty popular one. You kind of see those colors, but what's cool is, uh, when you, when you actually click on this button right here, it shows you the hex codes. So this is white. This is the orange color hex code. And what you can do is I can copy that, uh, F4921E, and I can come over here. And if I wanted that orange color to be my background color, I can paste that in. And now that's my background color. And then if I wanted my text to be this color here, we'll just see what that looks like. That's just 858585. I can come in here, change my font color to that. We'll just see what it looks like. Yeah, that doesn't see how it doesn't. It's not contrast enough. So, um, so anyway, I probably would want to stick with the the all white, which is just F's. So I do that and I press save, and you can see there it, it's a, a very stark contrast there. Now, one other thing that you can do here with this, I, I'm going to show you the border in just a second. You can change the custom size. I usually like to, to maybe pump this up just a little bit uh, to, to make it stand out um, just a little bit more. So I did 200 by 40. So you can see that. I could also pump up the, uh, the font size as well. That, so it, it kind of it fits a lot better that way. Now, one other thing that you can do is you can change your border color. There's a bunch of different types of border colors, and this is for the, the submit button, uh, but solid is probably the one that you'll want to use most often. And typically what you'll want to do is take a color like this and either go a little bit lighter or a little bit darker than that color. So what you can do is if you copy this, you copy that hex code, and I paste this in here, I can go maybe a little bit darker like this, and save it, and it, it's not so much of a, a, a contrast there. So you, you can go a little bit darker, or if I went a little bit lighter, so like this one here, and it's just a matter of kind of playing around with it. See how it, it kind of changes things a little bit there. So that's that's one thing that you can do, or you can just go just completely dark and do like a kind of a brown color, and it, it makes it stand out a little bit more. And also, you know, if you wanted to change the border width, and see you can do things like that so those are things that you can do very very easily um, to make the the button the offer button stand out uh, a, a lot and you know rounding the corners as well um, makes it uh, makes it stand out as well so a lot of people will say well I want to put an image there um, and yeah that that's something that can be done but it requires a little bit of either CSS trickery or some uh, JavaScript trickery but what I would say is that rather than you know going and having a button designed or having the same button that everyone else looks at or everyone else uses uh, try doing something like this where it's just a very simple thing one thing that this does help with is this uh, this loads on your page a lot faster than having an image uh, that goes and gets downloaded uh, 
would. So uh, that uh, that's how that would work, or that's that's how I would do that. So, um, so that's that's one thing that you can do just real quickly. Now, the other thing that when people say I want my web forms to look good, a lot of times they're what they're actually saying is um, I want it to match my website, right? And so, um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to just pull up a. Let's see, I don't know if my website is. I haven't. Um, yeah, well, let's just do this. So this is just my blog that I use for testing and things like that. But um, a lot of times, this and just so you know, this is a WordPress site. A lot of times, I'll, you know, people will want to throw their um, their web form over here in the the sidebar, or maybe you know on the home page, they'll want to put it in one of the widgets down here on the bottom. One of the things that that uh, that you can do. Uh, to make sure that when you're building your web form that it's going to fit inside of there is you can install this tool called Firebug. And I, I was actually going to talk about Firebug a little bit later, uh, but I'll, I'll go ahead and talk about it now. Uh, but uh, Firebug is a tool that lets you see the code that created the stuff on the page, right? So what I want to do here, if you click on this little button right here when you install Firebug, and actually let me show you how to install Firebug first. You go to Tools and then Add-ons. This is inside of Firefox. And just up here in the top right, do a search for Firebug. And um, I've, I've already got it installed, so that's why it's not listed here. But um, once you see the one that says Firebug, you press, on, press Install. It makes you restart your browser. And um, it, it then shows up right here. So Firebug, you can see, you know, is there. So um, once once you have it, you can click on this button that's up here in the top right, and that turns Firebug on. And this down here, this bottom panel down here, shows you the code and the CSS that created the content on the page. And I'm not expecting you to be a code uh, person, but what I do want want you to do is know how to use this because it's actually a really cool tool and a time saver. Um, what you do is you click here on this button right here that has the, the arrow, and you can see as I hover over the different elements on the page, um, the little blue box pops up. So what I wanna do is actually click on this one right here. And so I have selected uh, the, the HTML code down here that created, created that box. And what I'm gonna do is actually go to the layout tab over here on the right-hand side, and this actually tells me the size and the width of the uh, that box. So you can see, to in total, um, I have uh, it. Well, the box, the area is actually 251 pixels wide. So I have 251 pixels that I can use, um, and that's how wide my web form should be. So when I'm going in here to build my web form, and I click here on. Uh, when I come to format and I go to layout and style, I'm going to make my web form, let's just make it 250 to be safe. And so now, um, yeah, so there we go. So there's my 250. So that's a 250 pixel wide web form. So now you can see that kind of bunches things up here. So what I would do then is put my labels above, right? So Fill out the form to get my ebook. My labels are above uh, my fields. My fields are the right width. And now, if I was to go and take this code, let me go and just publish this real quick. Um, if I was to go and take this code and log into my my WordPress site here. the code, just take the JavaScript code here and put it into um, one of my widgets, my sidebar widgets. So this is one way you can do it. You just throw a text widget over here and put that in, put the code in, press save. I'm actually going to delete this one because there's nothing in there. So now, if I come back and look at this, if 
there's my web form. Now you can see, well, you know what? There's a little bit of uh, padding there. And I actually, you know, I forgot about that. Um, Infusionsoft adds about, uh, I want to say it's about 20 pixels of padding uh, to the, yeah, it's actually 40 pixels of padding total. So 20 on each side. So we actually wanted to take your web form and actually make it uh, 200 and uh, actually, no, sorry, it's not 210. You want to do 230 pixels wide. So it's whatever your, uh, whatever that width was that we saw, uh, it's that minus 20 pixels. So when we do this, I'm going to republish. I forgot about that. That still didn't, that didn't change it, but you, you get the point. Um, that, that will make it fit inside. And actually it might be 210. Let's just change it real quick. I'm kind of OCD about that stuff. So we're going to change our layout and style. 210 pixels. Go back. And you may want to drop these down to just a little bit, the 190. All right, there we go. So, yeah, so it is actually, um, I believe, 40 pixels less than what you calculate there. Yeah, it's not updating here on my site for some reason. So, anyway, so that's, that's what you want to do there. Um, now, the next question is, well, what about transparent without the border. What if I wanted to, to do that? Well, there are some CSS tricks that we'll get to in just a second that I can show you how to do that. But let's, let me show you how to do it out of the box. Um, there is another plugin or another tool that you can install in Firefox called um, uh, Color or, uh, Colorzilla. I don't know if I have it installed. I don't. Um, Colorzilla is a pretty cool little deal here um, that uh, I don't want to restart. But um, what it does is it adds an eyedropper to your to uh, to Firefox, and it will tell you what the what the actual color is of that pixel that you select, um, so that you can make the background the same. So if I wanted this gray background to match this gray background, uh, I can do that in Firefox or uh, in Firebug as well. I just have to go and find the color code in the style that made it do that, which it's actually this one right here, F9, F9, F9. So if I take this F9 here and I come back to my web form and I edit this and I'm going to go to my layout and style, come to my style here, and I think I'm just using the, let's just use this one here. I want my background to be that same color as my form. Now, um, now you have the ability to change this to match. If you wanted it to match, you can have it match. Um, so the same background color of the body as the background. Um, you can't make it transparent from here, but you can... Um, you can make it uh, um, the same color. You didn't have the ability before to change the body, uh, but you do now. Um, I'm not sure what happened to my labels there when I did that. Oh, I, I did. I don't know why. What's up with this? This is probably just a demo thing I was playing with. Um, let's make these a black color. There we go. All right, so there's my labels. All right, so you can see now if I was to go ahead and save this and publish it, um, theoretically, 
There we go. Now that web form matches the look and feel of where I put it. Now yours might have white. Yours might um, yours might have uh, you know a small uh, change from white to like a light gray, or it might be purple. It, it, regardless of the way, if you use Colorzilla, you can um, click on Colorzilla, pick a uh, color, and it will actually tell you exactly the color code for that. Um, so that you can make that match. So um, I very, very quickly made it look like the, the, the rest of my site just by doing those things. All right. So those are just some of the basic things that you can do out of the box um, with Infusionsoft to make your web forms look good. But what if we want to take it to the next level? What if we want it to be a little bit more ninja trickish? Well, one thing that we can do, um, a lot of times uh, we have a font on our website that might not be the font that's being used or that's available inside Infusionsoft. Um, I think, I don't know if I have, sorry, I'm just looking through some code here. Actually, you know what? I know one that does. Be what? Please be working. Ah, our website is down. Uh, let's see. Infusionsoft does. So on Infusionsoft, we use some fonts that are not the the standard web fonts, like these ones here. Um, we're using this ASAP font on our website. This isn't one of those web fonts that uh, that you can install or you can just you know use out of the box with Infusionsoft. So um, what it, it's actually potentially using, but maybe not, is, uh, well, I'll just show you. Uh, I don't know if it's in there, but Google has Google Fonts. And what, hap what Google Fonts does is Google actually hosts this font file and you can use CSS to add these different types of fonts to your website. Um, and uh, whether or not someone has that font installed in their computer, it actually will download the font uh, when the page loads and you'll be able to use that font without having to make it an image, which is the way that you've had to do it in the past. So Google has all these fonts. So a lot of people's websites actually use Google fonts to control the, the fonts that are actually being used on the page. And so um, basically the way that it works is once you have uh, the font that you wanna use, um, Google gives you this, this code here uh, that you can use to um, uh, load this font and use it in uh, your website, or in this case, we're going to use it for our web forms. So one thing that we can do here um, is we can use this standard code here, um, and basically it's just a matter of like I like I just showed you. You go through, you find your font that you want to use. Um, you can sh you say use it, and then you can say um, these are the ones that I'm going to potentially use on my page, and um, they give you this code here that you put onto your website. And I'm going to show you how to do that. And then um, you use this CSS code to uh, control the, uh, the font for that, that individual element. So let me, let me show you how this works. In the Web Form Builder, there is a snippet that is an HTML snippet. When you drag this out and we put this here, this allows us to go ahead and paste in that HTML code that uh, that Google gave us to be able to use this this Roboto slab font. Okay, so when I do that now, now I can go and say I want this specific element to use that font. So um, what we can do is we can uh, we can use Firebug, and I'm actually I'm going to um, do something real quick here publish this. Uh, 
I'm going to actually open up this in a, uh, in a new tab here so that you can see it. Uh, what we can do is we can say, I want, and we're, again, we're using Firebug, I want to change this element here to have that font family that Google gave me before from right here. I'm going to copy that and watch what happens now. And that worked. Dang it, I typed it in wrong. There we go. Um, this should be working, I'm not sure. Well, I'll just change this down here. There we go. Um, I'll show you how to actually do this in Infusionsoft in just a second here. But um, you see here, I, I changed the font family in the CSS, and now it's using that font. And if I wanted to um, use any of the, I think it was 500 was option. I can make it bold, and I can, uh, I'm basically using that, that font from the Google Font Library. So um, that, that's one thing that you can do now. How do you know what font you're using? Well, let's pull up, uh, actually, you know what? Let's get an example. Somebody type in your website, and I'll, I want to pull it up real quick, If you and I want to see if you use a different font than a standard font. So if you know that you use something from Google Fonts or something like that, type that into the question box, and uh, there we go. Monique Cunningham, you win. You're first. So... All right, so let's see. These look actually like the standard fonts, but let's take a look. Yeah, so you're just using the standard fonts here. So one thing, that basically the way that you do this is if you're using Firefox, the quickest, easiest way to do it, or sorry, if you're using Firebug, um, you, you find the body tag, and the typically a good web designer will set the font family for the entire page right here in the body tag. So this tells you which fonts you're using. So these fonts are available inside the web form builder in Infusionsoft. So if we come back to our design and we go to our style and we choose, um, I don't know which one I'm using here. Let's just go with this one. Um, when I change my label, font family. Um, I have times, which is one of the, the fonts that you had. And all right, so that's, that's one of your fonts. You also have Georgia, which was one of your fonts. So you could use any of those. So let's try another one. Um, much more marketing. Let's try that one. And I'll just give you a couple of examples of, of how you can do this. There we go. All right. So this is Renee. You have... Lucida Sands and Lucida Grand is the one that you're using. So um, again, you come to the body tag right there and in the CSS you're looking for, it says font family. It says Lucida Sands and Lucida uh, Grand. So again, in the, the uh, web form builder here, um, you have, oh, you don't have Lucida. Perfect. So um, Lucida is... Uh, 
look at your code. I, I think Lucida is actually is a web safe font that you don't have to do any of the trickery. Yep, it's not. It is. So it so with Lucida, you don't need to do any of the, the loading or the Google fonts or anything like that. You just need to come in here um, to your code. And I'll show you again. I'll show you how to do this inside the, uh, the builder here in just a second. Um, uh, that was right here. There we go, Lucida. So you would just need to, to have your your stuff, uh, your um, your CSS use this. So the way that we do this is in the web form builder in that same HTML area. Once we have this, we do this style, and this is a this is how you do CSS in in. Uh, in anywhere, anytime you're doing CSS, um, you can do, you, you do these tags and you put all of your, your uh, CSS in, in the middle here. Now I have a, um, this CSS cheat sheet that I'm going to make available to everyone. Um, this will be as the additional download here. So this, this will give you some, an idea of th how you can change things and things that you, you can change on, um, uh, when you're, when you're using, uh, different things inside Infusionsoft. But for, uh, for example, if we want to change the, the text font, what we have to do is come here and look and say, okay, um, what in here is, uh, can we, can we use to, to do this? So, uh, you want to look for the class or an ID, but in this case, we're, we're good with the class. So we're going to say that the div, with a class of title, we want the font to be uh, Lucida. Okay, so what we do here is we come back in here and we say div dot title font dash family Lucida. And actually, one thing that I I do a lot is I just copy. like that and paste it. Now, one thing that you may need to do is add this right here, the exclamation important. Uh, what that does, there's a, there's without getting too much into it, there's a hierarchy in um, when you're doing CSS, there's certain things that have um, more uh, weight when it comes to what it actually looks like. Uh, and if there's conflicting um, CSS directives, it says this is the one that when you do this, this puts it at the highest of the priority list. So you do that and you press save. And if we come back and um, close this, uh, go ahead and publish this. When we reload it, you can see it still is using that same font uh, that was no wasn't a font that we could select from the list because I have a CSS somewhere right here. This is that CSS that I put in. Remember with the important right there. This CSS is saying use that Lucida Grand font. So we could also, because we're loading that uh, that other one, uh, let me go back to Google Fonts here. I can't remember the Robo Slab. If we came back to our web form here, um, and I edit this, let's make it be that other one, the Robo Slab. A Roboto slab serif. We'll go ahead and go back. We'll go ahead and publish this. Publish. 
and that's that other font. Right? So that's, that's one thing that you can do uh, that will uh, kind of spruce things up. And if you can, again, if you can go and go to your site, use Firebug, find that body tag. It should usually be right there at the top. Look for your font family, and that will allow you to um, decide, number one, figure out, is this one of the standard web safe fonts, or is it something else? And uh, now you know how to make it use the same fonts as the rest of your website. So um, we have a little bit of time left. I wanted to show you one more thing uh, that you can do with your styles. Um, and actually, you know what? I already have it set up in uh, my legacy web forms. I know I'm doing this in a different spot, but it's the same exact thing. Uh, so um, one thing that I did here, and I, I've seen a couple people do this as well, um, where they uh, they want to have uh, no background. And also there's th this form also will uh, make it so there's only an underline at the bottom instead of a box around the entire field. So this this right here, uh, let me show you how to do this. This little style uh, snippet here sets, makes it so that there's no background color. So see how there's this blue color around here? Um, this actually gets rid of that. So um, let me show you, let me just uh, get rid of that real quick. I'm going to save this and do the same thing here. Okay, so you can see there's this big blue background around here. Um, if I go back and edit that form and I put that CSS back in there, so background none important. I'm going to show you how to figure out what this should say uh, here in just a second. We're going to go ahead and save that, and we'll save this here. When I refresh, oh, dang it, I think you have to save it out inside as well. Yeah, when I save it here, now there's no background there. So it makes it completely transparent. Now. Here's how you have to do this. Again, with Firebug, um, what you have to do is look for this table class equals background, okay? And um, it's going to be different for everyone, but you have to find this. Once you click here, you want to find what it says right here. So mine says custom 24. Now, if I was to switch to a different theme inside of my... Uh, my or a different style here. If I was to switch to this one, for example, that number is going to change. So that's why you, you kind of have to be a little bit ninja trickery here. So see now it says custom 42. So what I would need to do is come in and take this custom 42, copy it, come back in here, and I use that as my selector. So I basically just change this right here. Custom 42 dot background. We're setting the background to none and make sure that it's important. Again, giving it the highest priority. Save this. Refresh. Ta-da. No background. Okay. So, so that's one thing that you can do. The other thing that I wanted to show you real quick um, and this is actually just kind of a little novelty thing, um, is that you can, uh, with your CSS, make it so that um, your, uh, your fields, your, your, uh, the text fields that you can type into, um, you can uh, make it so that it doesn't have a border except for on the very bottom. So if I come here and I, I'm going to go to my layout style, and in my style here, let's just choose this one. Um, actually, this one's not going to be a good one. Let's do that one. In my style here, um, I want my uh, yeah, 
actually not that'll work. Okay. Um, I, we have this border that goes all the way around the box. If we wanted to change that, I'm actually going to make it just straight black. I think by default, it's something else, but, um, so when I save this, what we can do, close it, save it. Um, it's really hard to see actually. I'm not sure why it's not working, but um, we can make it so that there's only a border on the bottom. There's only a, a line on the bottom to fill out. Order. Huh. Oh, I made it white. There we go. So um, that's that's another thing that you can do. So when I go to type this in, I would type in Jordan Hatch, right? So one thing that I've seen people do is that they'll take like a, a paragraph, I think, um, if Brad still, and Dave still do this on sixth division. They used to. Yeah. So my name is, and you know, you fill in the blanks. So he's he's got this web form that, dear Brad, my name is Jordan Hatch, and I want to see how these guys are killing it, right? So um, that's one way that you can do that is if you actually wanted it to just be an underline, um, you can you could put that in there and uh, same same idea there. So, all right. So um, we're actually out of time for content. Um, maybe what I'll do is try and do a, a JavaScript Ninja Tricks uh, call a little bit later. Um, actually, next week, what I'm going to I'm going to um, I'm going to play the I'm in charge card, and I'm actually going to pick the topic for next week um, for more reason than one. Um, I, I want to do that. So. Um, we're going to do that uh, next week, and so I'll, I'll, I'll spend some time next week talking about some JavaScript uh, tricks that you can use on web forms. So um, uh, hopefully you found some value in, in what I talked about today. So actually what I want to do real quick, um, we're going to turn the time over to you for question and answer. And so go ahead and start typing your questions into the question box on GoToWebinar. While you're doing that, um, I just launched a poll. Let me know how you'd rate the content of today's call. Let me know if you learned anything or if it was a complete waste of time. This helps me to know if I should do calls like this in the future. So go ahead and type your questions in. And while you're doing that, I'm going to start answering some questions. And I promise I will remember to close the poll so that you can see my screen. So, uh, all right. So Mike asks a great question. Um, can we use these tricks on landing pages. Yes, you can use these tricks on landing pages. It, again, it's the same editor uh, for uh, the web forms as it is the landing pages. So it absolutely will do that. Um, uh, Miguel asks, how do I make the web form transparent and without a border? Um, you do what I just showed you how to do there. If you need me to, to show you again how to do that, type that into the questions, Miguel, and I can do that. Uh, I can do that. So. Um, Tony says, what was the color code website address again? Um, so the color code website is cooler, K-U-L-E-R dot adobe dot com. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, if you look in the chat box, I send a link to everyone um, that's there um, to go and get that link. And then I'll also send one to the, um, to the user voice. All right. Close the poll as well. All right, so there's a couple links in there. Um, so, all right, so Barb asked the question, do I have to link my email to the submit button? Uh, I'm not sure what you're asking there, Barb. Uh, if you can clarify that, um, uh, what, you're, what you're asking for. Um, I can, I can answer the question. I'm not sure exactly what you're asking. So uh, Mike asks, this is pretty much the same with Blogspot. Yeah, um, styling is styling. There's no, you know, it's not like there's a, a proprietary Infusionsoft style code. Um, we're, we're just using the same stuff that everybody else uses. So um, it's, it's very similar to uh, the other things that you might be using out there. 
So uh, Linda says uh, that's a huge amount of padding that uh, that there's no way to do anything about. Uh, 40 pixels out of a 200 pixel wide sidebar is a huge amount of width. Uh, yeah, so one thing that you can do, um, again, using the CSS like I showed you um, and using that important uh, tag, uh, the padding comes from... Actually, you know what, the padding, I'll tell you, I know how the padding comes. The padding comes when you use the JavaScript. Um, the JavaScript, uh, let me go back to my website here. When you use the JavaScript embed, um, what it's actually doing is creating an iframe for your, uh, for your form. And that iframe is, is automatically uh, 40 pixels uh, wider than uh, the width of the form. So there's not, let's see. Let's look through the code real quick to see if there's a, so um, what you could do if you wanted to um, if you wanted to do that, um, it actually looks like it's I'm not sure what happened there, but um, what you could do is just don't use the JavaScript version and use the uh, use the uh, the HTML code and that won't add the padding there. Um, so that, that's an option that you have as well uh, to fix that. Um, Renee says, does Infusionsoft have a plugin for Infusionsoft to add in a web form at the bottom of a blog post to get more signups? Um, come to temp, come on the call next week and I will maybe give you that. Um, I, I actually created, you know what? I'll just do it. Um, I created a plugin that does that. Uh, we've been testing it with some of the ex, uh, success coaches. Um, and what this what this plugin does is called the Infusionsoft Web Form plugin. Um, it does a couple things. Number one, on the uh, the widgets, it creates a widget for your uh, web forms, Infusionsoft web forms. You choose the web form that you want from the drop down, and you press save, and it now. Um, if we go to my blog, come on. Um, let's go to one of my pages here. It automatically pulls in, and that this one actually is a landing page, so it looks a little funky, but it pulls in your, your landing page code uh, and in, injects it in there. Um, so that's one, or it's web forms and landing pages. Um, the other thing is that it also, um, when you're editing a post or a page, uh, you have a button right here that allows you to insert a Infusionsoft web form into a post. So once you've written your post, um, was this let's say you wanted to put a web form here um, it puts in a short code there and then you update it and there's my two web forms but this is my infusion soft web form and it puts that code in there for you so um, there's a couple of things that's just a standard whatever web form but uh, that those are some some things that you can do uh, with it. My only caveat to telling you that it's that I'll make it available is that this isn't something that support can support. This is kind of a rogue project that I created. Um, so if you call into support, they're not going to help you with this. Um, but it does work uh, as long as you you know you go in and you set it up correctly. So 
um, I'll work on uh, making that available to you uh, sometime. So uh, probably as one of the additional downloads. All right. Um, all right. Oh, um, a couple of people were saying my style tag was spelled wrong. Uh, and that's why it wasn't working. Okay, that makes work. That works. Um, all right. Uh, let's see. A couple of people are saying, will this be in the archive soon? Yes, I'll put it in as quickly as I can. Um, uh, Monique, you asked, how do you use the web form in a drag and drop builder? I'm not sure what you're asking. I mean, the, the web form, when you're editing the web form, it is a drag and drop builder. So I'm not sure what you're what you're asking for. If you can clarify that. Um, let's see. Bill says, Jordan, can we input the CSS on the actual page instead of inside of the web form itself? So when you're putting it on a page, uh, when you're putting it in the way that I showed you, that's that's the only way to do it. But when you're putting it there, it's exactly the same as if you're putting it in the head tag. It, it doesn't really matter where you put the style code. Uh, you just ha you have to put it into an HTML area. Um, otherwise, if you were to, you know, just take this and say, uh, you know, put it into a, a paragraph snippet, um, Infusionsoft is going to wrap this and make it look like it's just text. So you have to put you have to use the HTML snippet because then we don't add any style any uh, uh, HTML around it to tell the browser that it's actually text instead of a style. So, um, Mary says, great job. I was able to go in and change my button and I'm getting ready to create a new campaign and I feel more confident. Awesome. Glad that, uh, that you uh, are more confident. Let me know how your campaign goes. I'd love to hear uh, how that works. Um, let's see. Uh, Nadal says, how do you put the label inside the form instead of to the left? Um, there, the only way to do that is with JavaScript. Um, and I was hope I was going to try and get to that today, but uh, maybe we'll try and talk about that tomorrow or not tomorrow, but next week. So um, Tyler says, are there any plans to improve the drag and drop editor even more than what it is right now? Yes, there's lots of plans to do that. <laughs> um, it's always going to be something that we're going to be adding uh, new features to or making things more e uh, making things easier uh, to do. So the answer to that is yes. Um, Scott says next week will you show how to add a terms and conditions click box to an order form? Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely, we can do that. Um, do me a favor though, Scott. Shoot me an email. Just reply to the the email that you got sent with the link to join the call today. Send me an email with a link to uh, or just a reminder to let me know that you want me to talk about that. Um, Nick says, how do you create a landing page? Do the web forms need to be separate from the landing page or can you put them in the same document? So landing pages, I'm sorry here, uh, my screen here is a little bit different uh, than my desk. So uh, the, uh, the landing pages are actually built in the campaign builder. So um, the way that you build a landing page is very similar to how you build a, uh, a web form like I showed you here. You drag out a goal, but in this case, instead of it being a web form being submitted that completes the goal, you click on the drop down and you choose a landing page. So now this is our landing page. When we double click to go and configure the landing page, we build the landing page. Come on. Let's try this again. Oh, there we go. So now we're building a landing page inside Infusionsoft. So it's very similar um, to how we built the web form. It's just a landing page has more places to put stuff. That's that's really the difference. So um, Tony asks, what's the address to the links of the past mastermind webinars? Um, so the way that you get to those is if you go to um, help.infusionsoft.com forward slash mastermind. And right here, kind of in the middle of the page, there's the archive. Um, this shows you the last 10 calls. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll make um, the stuff that I talked about today available as the additional 
uh, resources, and then you'll be able to also download the, the today's recording as well. So, okay. Um, all right. Um, Chris says, can we left justify a web form? Meaning if I place a web form at the bottom of a WordPress post, will it justify left in the post, not in the middle? Um, it will if you use my WordPress plugin. There's an option uh, when you're editing those pages. Um, let's just, uh, I'll show you here. If you put in a web form, let's say it's down at the bottom here again. Uh, there's an option here to left, right, or center align it. So um, if you use the plugin, it will do that. Otherwise, it, actually what it does is it just makes it the full width of the, the page uh, and then center, centers it. So um, Mike says, can we use a snippet of code to put the form field label inside the input box? Yes, you can. Um, but again, it uses... Uh, it uses the, uh, um, you have to use JavaScript to do it. So uh, Steve says, did you just flash the responsive theme? I've been playing with that. Yeah, I actually use the responsive theme for my, for my website, um, for my blog. It's pretty awesome and free. Um, Tom says, uh, quick question on the submit function. How do I set this up to run an action set or add some tags when it's submitted? Do I simply set this up in a follow-up sequence? No, because everything that you just said is all in legacy. Um, you want to do it inside of the campaign builder. So what I, uh, I'll show you real quickly how it works. Um, what you do is you drag out a sequence in the campaign builder. So you have your goal that that's the web form. You connect the goal to the sequence. And then inside of the sequence is where you can set up your emails and also your tags. So a sequence in the campaign builder is like an action set and a follow-up sequence in legacy. Um, what I would recommend that you do though, Tom, is go sign up for Scott's uh, Campaign Builder Virtual Academy call, and he will show you exactly how to do all that stuff in, in there. So, um, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, yeah, I've already answered that one, Chris, about getting the label inside of the field. Um, Kara says, how many votes do we get on the mastermind idea selection survey? Uh, you have 10 votes that you can use. So, and you can use up to three votes per, um, uh, uh, three votes per, um, idea. Um, someone asked, I can't remember who it was asked about doing terms and conditions. Um, this is how you can do terms and conditions on the shopping cart. This was actually sent by one of our success coaches, Greg. Um, there's an article in the, uh, in the help center that shows you how to do that. And it's got the code and everything there, um, that allows you to do that. So, um, you might, you may need to adapt it for a web form, uh, because this was built for the shopping cart, but, uh, but you absolutely can do that. So, um, Let's see. Danny says, is there a way to use the same form and landing page as a goal for multiple campaigns? Um, the same URL, not cloned. Um, no, there, there's not a way to do that um, because each web form has a specific function. And if you're using one web form to, to um, if you're using one web form to start multiple things, the way that you would just build that is in your campaign, you would have it start multiple things. Just have the sequences that you wanted it to start connected from here. Now this is gonna show, it's gonna look a little weird here. Let me kind of fix it here. Um, this would this web form being filled out would start all three of these sequences because I didn't give it any rules to decide. So it would start all three of those sequences. Uh, the, the point of a web form is to accomplish one thing, not to, not to accomplish five things or 10 things. Um, so you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to do that. Um, you, so what I would recommend Danny, um, is, uh, talk with your account manager, uh, and have them, uh, talk with you about some of our advanced coaching options. Um, and they might be able to help you figure out a better way to do what you're trying to do. Um, so. 
All right. Uh, Mary says, is legacy the old product? Um, it's the legacy stuff. When I, when I was talking about the legacy stuff with that other question, um, the legacy stuff is the old way of setting it up. It's um, similar, if not same exact functionality. It's just the, the older, more difficult way of setting things up. Um, just by way of just anecdotal information, um, I went in and had to build a and, and edit a follow-up sequence in legacy um, a couple weeks ago, and I was surprised at how incredibly difficult it was. I've been using the campaign builder for about the last year and a half now, and it is infinitely easier to build uh, things in, in Infusionsoft using the campaign builder than it was with building it with follow-up sequences and web forms and all these different various areas of the software. So um, if you haven't gone into the, the legacy or into the, uh, the campaign builder stuff yet, um, again, I highly recommend go and sign up for Scott's virtual academy call uh, on the, uh, the campaign builder. Um, let's just show you here. Uh, Help.infusionsoft.com forward slash academy. And uh, I'm not sure when this next one is, but it's probably within the next week or so. Uh, this one here, the campaigns, uh, Wednesday, April 24th, which was last week. So he'll be updating this um, probably tomorrow or Monday with the new schedule. So come check back, but go and sign up for the Virtual Academy. If you haven't gotten into the campaign builder yet, I highly recommend that you go and do that. So um, let's see. Uh, Nadal says, I want to use one web form in many places. I want to know which page it was submitted from and make a decision in the campaign what to send the user. So Nadal, again, you started off right with, with the one web form. The one web form can be used in multiple places. So for example, um, this Virtual Academy web form, we probably have it in 10 different places. There's 10 different spots where we've promoted the Virtual Academy but they all do the same thing. You shouldn't have, you shouldn't try and say, well, this web form on this page does this thing. And when I put it on that exact same web form on a different page, it does a different thing. If you're trying to do that, you actually need to be creating multiple web forms, one web form for each thing that you want that to do. So for example, I have a web form for the virtual academy. I have a web form for the mastermind webinars. They're separate web forms. They do similar things, but one is to sign people up for the mastermind webinar and one is to sign people up for the virtual academy. Now I have this web form on 10 different places as well, and but they all do the exact same thing. So one web form does one thing. That's the way that you should think about it. Don't try and say, well, if the, I, I have one web form and when I put it on this page, it does this thing. And when I put it on this page, it does another thing. Uh, that's not how it works. So, all right, uh, Chris says, in the contact screen, are all follow-up sequences in the tab from Legacy? Will the new campaign be included soon? Actually, the new campaigns are there. Um, it's, a, it's just a different tab. Uh, if you go and pull up, I don't know if I've pulled up the contact lately. I haven't. Um, if you go and pull up a contact here, just pull up. This one, for example, and it's actually the same down there, but um, you have your uh, follow-up sequences. These are all of the legacy follow-up sequences that that person is currently in. You have this campaigns section that the campaign is what would show all of the things that are, that are in, uh, that that contact is in uh, for the campaigns. Uh, Sue says, I noticed the Virtual Academy web form button has a gradient green color. How do we put a gradient in the web form or is it too ninja to go into right now? Um, it's not too ninja, too ninja to go into right now, but um, that was all, all of that is custom. We're not, we're just using the, the basic code um, that the web, the web form gives us. And then we go and customize the look and feel. Um, so this is actually, I think is a butt is an image that we've turned into a button. Yep. It's an image. Oh, maybe not. Yeah, it is. It's an image that we're using for that. So that's how we did that. That again, this is custom. 
that's the thing. It's like we have the resources and the know-how to go and customize this ourselves. If you don't have that, just use what you have in, in uh, inside Infusionsoft um, out of the box. So, all right. Um, oh, my gosh, what's happening here? All right. So uh, last question um, is from Sue. She said, um, did you build the landing page for the mastermind webinars and the campaign builder landing page um uh that no we we this is all custom yes that is a picture of me um it's about a year old but um we this is all completely custom we use drupal to manage this website so this is completely custom so all right so um i think that's it for the questions for the call today um so um, again, I'm going to go and post the recording uh, online as quickly as I can. Uh, thank you for coming on the call today. Follow me on Twitter. As soon as I post the recording, I will put it up there. Um, so thank you again for coming on the call today. Um, stay tuned for some uh, some special announcements about next week's uh, webinar. And uh, I look forward to, to seeing you on the call next week. Thanks again and have a great day, everybody.